All right, let's jump right into vacation. Um, I am in Austin starting my week of stay and I just took Riley to the vet because unfortunately her anal gland ruptured. So I noticed it um, during our first stop while we were driving and it got worse. So I tried to call a bunch of places yesterday trying to schedule an appointment, but everybody was booked up. Oh fuck, I left my ring in the bathroom, I have to go get it. All right, I am back. I just needed to get my aura ring. I left it in the bathroom when I washed my hands. Her anal gland ruptured, so it's all bloody right now and it sucks, it's gross. They can't do anything about it, but they gave me antibiotics and steroids to give to her for maybe the course of a week. And then um, once I'm back in San Diego, um, two weeks after today, I will have to take her back to the vet in San Diego after it has healed and make sure that they open her um, anal gland. But um, I need to pick up some food and I also need to get some water. I haven't really figured out what I wanna do yet today. I do think I need to go to the grocery store and just pick up a couple of treats because the um, antibiotic says to feed it with food and I am so far away from my Airbnb. I am not going back right now because that's just the disadvantage of having it out there. Um, you can't just stop at home anytime you want. In the middle of the day, it feels like a whole journey to go back. So I actually decided to switch my Airbnb to someplace, a house in North Austin, because I was like, I can't fucking do this. It's a tiny house. It's 45 minutes from the city. And I do not want to drive so much every single day because then I have less time to enjoy things. I'm spending my time driving everywhere. It's kind of unfortunate that it happened. This is the first time I've ever had this kind of anal gland issue with Riley before, so I was unaware of it, but I'm glad she's okay. I just need to get these in her system so she can feel more comfortable because it's definitely probably not feeling great for her. I'm here at a honeybee farm. I saw signs on the road for it and the reviews seem pretty positive and I love honey because I love to drink it with my tea. So I wanted to come check it out and uh, if they have good honey, happily buy some and bring some home and I wouldn't mind seeing the process. So let's go in. Okay, so before I leave tomorrow, I figured I could show the tiny house a little bit. So just came in the door. There's a sitting area over there. Please pardon my shit everywhere. There's not a lot of places to put things. Seating area over here. Here is a ladder to go up to the loft where I will be sleeping. Right up ahead, we have the kitchen. So this black thing right here is um, a place to cook. I believe you just open it up and it has, you know, the stove and whatnot. I would say that the kitchen area is actually not too inconvenient to use. I felt like when I was standing here washing the dishes, um, that was Riley's feeding bowl and this is what I used yesterday to eat some fried rice and it wasn't really that bad. It's got an apartment sized refrigerator and uh, the good thing is that, you know, my food fits in the freezer just fine. Okay, I'm not gonna try to open the freezer. It's actually a little hard to open, but hello full-length mirror and we see Riley over there okay small bathroom and uh, the shower is just behind the door right here um, I did not have the most pleasant shower experience this morning because the water went cold on me and uh, that really really sucks I hate hate cold showers Alright, hey, so there is a really nice outdoor area right here that's um, beautiful. It does feel pretty isolated. The main house is on that side, so um, it's smart of them to do it this way because if it was on the other side, I don't think that, at least I wouldn't be using this outdoor space if they could directly see me. But um, today was pretty good. I actually don't feel that tired even though I pretty much was out um, from 9 a.m. to 4.30, which is a pretty long day. But I stopped by the honey bee farm earlier today and I got two different kinds of honey. So the first one I got is this one. It has, it says lucky lime and sea salt. 
honey infused with limes and sea salt. So I tried this one and I surprisingly liked it when they first say stuff like, oh, it has limes in it. I always assume that, ooh, it's going to be too strong or it might just not be to my liking. Um, I rarely flavor things with, you know, limes or sauce or just like whenever people add in extra stuff like that, I'm just not used to it. Um, my parents never did it. I don't do it. So anyways, enjoyed this one. And then I also got another one, raw Texas clover honey. So clover, um, I tried several. Oh, this is one pound. But um, it is more of a very subtle sweetness. It's not ultra subtle, but compared to one of the earlier ones that I tried, I think it was called wildflower. It's just that the same quantity, this tastes less sweet than the other kind. Sorry, I was in mid burp right there. But um, yeah, the guy that I was speaking to, he says that this is usually the type that people like to use with tea. So I tried it again and I felt like it tasted really great. So I am excited to give this a try when I get home. And then lastly, today I went to Barnes and Noble. Um, originally, I went there because I wanted to buy a book. It's actually a new translation of the Odyssey by a woman called Emily Wilson. It came out about, I guess, three to four years ago, and it has been praised a lot, especially by the author that I loved recently, Madeline Miller. So I trust her judgment. I wanted to go buy it, but they don't have it there. However, I did pick up another book called The Wolf Den. So this book is by Elodie Harper, and it's set during uh, Pompeii times. So I'm really interested in those kind of ancient times. Even though it's fiction, um, good fiction can still be very, very, very interesting to read, as I have realized from Circe and The Song of Achilles, which are both books that I have absolutely loved. I love those books. I have not loved a book this much, I don't even know, in a, in a while. Um, so these are fantastic. They are by the author Madeline Miller and I'm very excited for her next book. She will be writing about Persephone. She specializes in Greek mythology. So um, yeah, these are just a couple of the things that I got today um, and I'll probably just be hanging out here for the rest of the day. Tomorrow I will be checking out of here. I will be going to the track at 9 30 in the morning. And then late afternoon, um, around two o'clock, I will be checking into my other Airbnb. And then I have to go get my car serviced because it's not sounding right. That's at three o'clock. But um, I'm very excited for a practice at the track. It's going to last about, by the time I get there and by the time I leave, it'll definitely be an hour about. That would be really, really cool. Uh, I've never been to a track before. I have never seen motorcycles race. I'm just super super excited so far i am definitely enjoying my trip uppers would you like to show us around brief ah. <laughs> come on over here so there is the main door and then over here to the left we have this outdoor area and she's already posing for us i'll try to walk slowly because this camera is not great at stabilization it might actually be better if i've got one hand on it but um yeah this very very cozy and private area looks very comfortable actually now would be a fantastic time to sit out here and read i think i will do that all right so i am on my way back to my airbnb where riley is waiting for me i stopped by in bastrop to pick up this smoothie because i found a place yesterday that i love but i'm sad because my new airbnb is an hour away from the smoothie place so most likely I won't be able to just stop by here easily. Um, maybe I'll try to find a way to stop by, but it is very out of the way, so I would be burning a lot of gas and time doing it. But I wanted to give them a shout out because it's a small town, it's a small shop, but they just, I just love the vibe of it. I feel like the interior is decorated very well. It's Radiant Mama, and it's, um, yeah, in Bastrop, Texas which is basically a town east of Austin. All right, hey guys, it is late afternoon on Friday and um, 
I just got back from doing my car maintenance, but I wanted to take a quick moment and talk about my time at the circuit. It was very brief, but it was so exciting and um, I am even more eager to be there tomorrow for a longer period of time because I just want to be able to take my time, relax, explore. And today I wasn't really able to do that because I was in between Airbnbs today. So I had to keep Riley with me, which meant that she was in the car, in the crate. And even though it was nice and cool in the morning, I had the windows down, I was still a little bit nervous having her just chilling in the parking lot. I was worried that people would pass by and see and like report it. Just random thoughts like that. I worry a bit too much sometimes, but it was so cool to see them in person and it's just like the circuit is huge you don't think about that when you're watching it over the live stream i go back tomorrow uh i will be there for most of the afternoon tomorrow Buffers. No. Off. Good. I might have to hold the bowl for her. <laughs> it's not heavy enough, it just shifts around too much. Okay, this is what I'm wearing for today. It is going to be a nice sunny day, 80 degrees, and I'm definitely going to make sure I put on sunscreen. I'm gonna be out for like three hours. I wanna protect my skin, and also I wanna get used to wearing it again just because it can feel really annoying, it's very sticky. I am going to get something to eat before I head over. I'm gonna to try to get something healthy, like an egg avocado. I saw this place nearby that looks like it's gonna be pretty good, so I will get that. Um, the hat is because it's most likely going to be windy there. So I'll bring it, I won't always wear it, but if it is windy, I will definitely put it on or tie my hair back or something like that. Um, it has been fairly windy here in Austin, which I'm not a fan of because when I went to Hurricane Utah, it was so freaking windy and um, I'm not used to that. Um, I don't recall it being super windy in New Jersey and it's definitely not in San Diego. So 
It was very different, but um, I slept so well last night. I feel fantastic and I am beyond excited for today. All right, so today I spent about three hours at the track. I watched free practice four, qualifying one, and qualifying two. And then I did spend some time walking around the Grand Plaza, although I forgot my wallet in my car. So that was a little bit annoying because I was thinking of maybe buying some merchandise and well, I could always go there tomorrow and make sure that I have my wallet with me so I can buy stuff. Pretty hot day. Uh, I would say it's, it's going to be challenging because you forget sometimes that when you watch live your view is not as good as when you watch the stream because the stream shows all these different angles they show aerial views from the helicopter and um, you just see more of the race than while you're there sitting um, so I am basically right across from everyone's pits I'm right near the start and finish line and um, I'm under some shade which is great but the screens that they have in front of you, if you want to watch the live stream, um, it's not very big. So, I mean, I guess you can see like the rider and you can see for the most part who they are if you recognize their number. But the um, ordering of the riders on the left hand side of the screen is just too small for you to read. But um, it is super loud there. So I actually think I need to buy live radio commentary well i'm gonna go check out the booth because i saw the booth um a couple times and i thought that it probably wasn't worth the money to spend it however if you do wear earbuds the commentary is too quiet for you to hear but if you don't wear earbuds you're gonna lose your hearing and i'm not interested in that so i'm gonna go check out that booth tomorrow i'm gonna arrive early um, way before GP starts. Yeah, I got home maybe like 30 minutes ago. I took Riley out for some fetch, but I wanted to spend some time now either looking up a trail I can take her on today or we'll f I'm still trying to find a good neighborhood to one wheel with her because I want to do a full one wheel recording ride and I need to find the right neighborhood for that. Or I just want to find like, ideally for me, it would be nice to find a stretch of road that's outskirts of um, the city so not not even suburban and I want views you know I don't want houses it would be nice to have farmland or something that I can ride on but I just find that unlikely because I feel like if you are on a rural road it's not gonna have space for me to one wheel on it's literally just two lanes and no, nothing on the sides so anyways I'm going to eat a little bit. I have some shrimp linguine alfredo from Red Lobster I ordered yesterday, but there's a puddle of sauce in here and that's really turning me off. So I will eat as much as I can and then, um, yeah, find a place and head out with Farley again.
Okay, so let's talk about the race. I actually plan on re-watching the race um, through the stream because when you attend in person, it's hard to get the big picture, right? Because I was sitting at the start and finish line right across from the pits and um, they did have screens showing the rest of the race, but those screens are pretty small, so I couldn't see the ordering of the riders, um, that text is way too small. And um, I mean, you can barely pick out who's where, but it's just, it's a weird experience where it's very exciting to be there in person, but you only get a fragment of what you normally see through the stream. So that is the downside, but very, very impressive. So my favorite rider that I followed nine years ago and who I still am interested in today is Mark Marquez. He has a huge following. He is a very, very successful rider, probably the second most successful MotoGP rider, um, second to Valentino Rossi. I am very surprised that he was able to ride this weekend because he had a very bad high side accident about two weeks ago. And um, very, very, very bad accident. Ty just letting go in the most spectacular fashion. That is, oh, theory me. That is a so he spent um, the past few weeks trying to recover. He missed out on, I think, two races, but he was back today. And um, he is apparently the most successful MotoGP rider here at Circuit of the Americas. But yeah, right when they started the race, he had a bad start. And I checked on Instagram and he said they had technical problems. So all the riders were just zipping past him and he was starting really slow. But what was pretty incredible throughout the entire race was how he was able to climb from 16th place and he finished at 6th place, which is very, very impressive. Of course, it would have been very nice to see him on the podium, but I still think that's, that's still great. Um, he passed up Fabio Cordararo, who is the world champion from last year. And I, I think he's a fairly young rider. I actually want to look him up a little bit more because he kind of seems intriguing. The first three were Enea Bastianini, and then it was Alex Rins, and then it was Jack Miller. So Jack Miller actually started at the very first position. He did the best time over the weekend during qualifiers and yeah, during qualifier two. That's where you get the, um, the grid ordering. So he was in first for a lot of the race, but um, towards the last few laps, Anaya passed him up, and it was actually a pretty impressive order overtake. Bashini, can he get a slingshot out of turn number 12? He's had the fastest Ducati, the fastest bike all weekend here in Gota. He winds that GP21 up to top gear. Here comes the move on the inside, using the slipstream. Anaya Bashini then leads. But it really makes me think about how I feel like for my life, I would have loved to do something competitive in whatever I could be good at, right? Whether it's a sport, whether it's like motorcycle racing, whether it's gaming, I feel like I would really enjoy doing that for a living. I'm a really competitive person and I feel like because of just the way my life is, I've had to suppress that a little bit, right? Because in my opinion, if you're not able to really achieve something meaningful out of it, then it's not necessarily worth it to be ultra try hard at something because it might not always bring you happiness. Yeah, it just makes me think about my life, how I feel like I can confidently say that programming, being a software engineer is not fulfilling for me. It is literally there because I need it for money. I need to live and um, that is in my opinion the current best way for me to earn money because it is the highest income of what's available to me right now 
I'm not sure if I'm at that point in life where I'm willing to take a massive pay cut to try something different that I might have more passion about. Honestly, something else I was considering in the past was it would be cool to be a software engineer for one of these motorcycle companies, but I don't know how many roles they have for that, let alone let it be remote. So I have checked on their websites before, but they have very few openings and they're mostly local. Maybe somewhere down the line in the future, I will make that jump because once in a while I do think about that occasionally where I'm like, it would be really nice to do something that I love and programming is not it. It's liter it's just there because I have to do it. Tomorrow I already booked a kayaking trip with Riley down the river. I will admit I'm a little bit nervous because when we went to Montana, we flipped over, but that was also largely because I was not paying attention. I was being an idiot playing um, on my phone while we were on the river. But this time around, I'm going to be fully present. <laughs> we're not going anywhere. Okay, uh, today is my last day here in Austin and I don't have too many major things planned. First thing that I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go for my one wheel ride with Riley. I'm gonna go in front of the Texas Chainsaw House and um, I feel like it would be cool to create like a creepy video with, oops, <laughs> with a creepy intro, take um, brief snippets from the movie, like really small ones and just kind of interlap it with my own recording of the house and then have us one wheeling and then have me talking. But um, after that, I'm going to get barbecue from a local place called Salt Lick in Round Rock. Ready, here is the meal. I'm assuming that's the brisket. These are the beef ribs. I have no idea what the sauce is. Bread is nice and soft, which I always really enjoy. And then pecan pie. So let's dig in. Mm. Nice and tender. I do like that so far. I know I should probably be eating this with my hands, but I want to avoid that as long as I can. So it does taste good, but I don't see this being something that I eat often. Um, I personally am not a big fan of eating saucy things very much. So the fact that this is nearly all sauce, sass, <laughs> and um, fairly annoying to eat, it's just not my type of thing. I still almost always prefer Asian food. That's just, um, I've ate the most of that growing up, and um, I like it a lot. In overview, I feel like as I keep eating, I'm liking it less and less. So this is a case where I don't find the food disgusting. It's not, um, but it's just not my preference, I suppose. Um, these kinds of sides, I don't really care for, I, like, I never eat coleslaw, the potato salad isn't bad, but the meat, even though it's tender, which is very important to me when I eat meat, um, in the past whenever I would cook like chicken breast for myself, I wouldn't do it properly, so my chicken breast would come out very, very dry and just so chewy, I don't like that, so this is tender, but the sauce. I think the sauce is just too much for me to enjoy eating. It's similar to when I eat Italian food, when I eat pasta. 
the sauce becomes overwhelming for me very quickly. <clears throat> and um, I, I just like eating stuff that is very, very minimal. That's, I think, what I like about Asian cuisine, or at least like when I eat at Ding Tai Fung, like when they cook their vegetables, it's the bare minimum. It's like garlic and they add salt and I think that's it. You know, the way they cook it is probably similar to how <clears throat> my mom used to do it. She just put oil and added a little bit of water. And um, their dishes, like pork chop fried rice, it's just rice, it's just eggs, scallions, and pork chop, and it's just light. And I think that that's just what I'm used to. So when I eat stuff like this, it's, it's heavy for me. Um, it doesn't go down easily. And while I'm in the moment eating it, I just feel sluggish. So it's kind of like not an enjoyable eating experience either. So I did get a lot of food. So I have plenty for later. I'll eat a little bit more meat. And then I'll eat my pie, I guess. Um, the rib is, you know, it's just me being picky and not wanting to use my hands. Maybe I'll use my hands later. But um, I'm preferring the brisket right now for sure. Although the sauce has like a tangy aftertaste to it or something that I'm not really a big fan of. <clears throat> 